So how do you become a software engineer and actually be good at it? Part of my advocacy is to encourage individuals, especially women, to get into science and technology careers. After eight years of being a software engineer, I may know a thing or two and I really just want to share how you can get into software engineering because it really is a rewarding career and it pays a lot of money. If you're still in high school or thinking about pivoting into a career in software engineering, what can you do right now to secure that first job? My pathway is getting a college degree, but it is expensive. And honestly, you don't need a degree to be successful in this career. I have worked with principal engineers, lead front-end developers, and CTOs who are self-taught and did not complete a degree in software engineering. So it's definitely doable, and this is what I know based on experience that I am hoping to share with all of you guys. The first one I'd say is the most common entry point, which is getting a university or college degree. According to the Stack Overflow 2022 Developer Survey, 80% of professional developers have completed some form of higher level education. So I finished a Bachelor of Computer and Information Sciences major in Software Development at Auckland University of Technology in New Zealand, and that took three years to complete. The thing about going to uni, let me say it again, is that it is expensive. In tuition fees alone, those three years would have cost me 35,000 New Zealand dollars and then add in the living costs, which could take up to 20,000 New Zealand dollars. And so before I even get my first job, I would have already spent 50 to 60,000 dollars and that could have been in student loans. But luckily for me, I was able to secure a three-year scholarship through my high school. So if you are in high school right now and think Thinking of going through this path, your adult self will thank you later if you just minimize your debts. Look into some scholarships available in your area or consider getting a part-time job. With a lot of things in life, things don't just get given. And so if you want a scholarship, you gotta reach out to the right people and actually work hard for it. But anyway, what do you even do in uni? And is it even worth it? Let me talk about this very memorable paper, which is Programming 1, where we learned the foundations of software development. All semester, we worked with Carol the Robot, and I kid you not, a lot of the things I learned in this course are basically covered in the Computer Science Fundamentals course in Brilliant. This part of the video is brought to you by Brilliant, which is an online interactive learning tool with great courses in maths, science, and computer science. With Brilliant, it keeps you and therefore your brain engaged. For example, instead of just sitting there and just listening to someone talk about an if-else statement, with Brilliant, you are actually executing those if-else statements that gives you a better understanding of how it actually works. Brilliant does an excellent job in explaining software engineering concepts such as if-else statements, loops, and actually executing algorithms. So if you want to learn more more, go and check out Brilliant in the link in the description box down below. And this is a platform that I 110% support because it really simplifies the explanations of these big and scary programming concepts. You know, when you think about coding, you always think about, oh, that's so technical, maybe it's not for me. But Brilliant really makes it fun. And at the end of each course, you just have that light bulb moment that Oh, that was easy. Now I know how loops work and I just did one, you know? There are a lot of courses to learn from and why not have fun doing it? All right, let's wrap up getting a degree. It takes time and money, but it definitely opens up a lot more doors for you because you can get into the workforce without a portfolio and without any experience. Because you're a grad, it's a different job market. A lot of corporates have graduate programs and internships you can jump into for two years. So for two years, you can basically apply as a graduate and I monitor the job market a lot. And at the end of every semester, there is a job ad for graduate programs. The next pathway 
to software engineering is a boot camp or short courses. Let's do a quick Google search of coding boot camps and you already get a long list that is available to your area, a lot of which are online courses. So this is definitely something you can do while you're working at a job and at home. And now that I look at it, a lot of them are actually web development short courses and understandably so. There's currently a huge demand for front-end engineers in Australia. So if you can finish a short course within six months, you'd still be in the good spot in this huge demand for front-end engineers. With boot camps, it's definitely quicker than getting a bachelor's degree while still maintaining structure in your learning. You'll be provided with learning materials and courses to follow to gain an understanding of the concepts of software engineering. It's like uni, but you have the flexibility and it's a lot more jam-packed because that three years is just shortened to six months or 12 months. And in terms of costs, it's still 15 to $20,000. There's still a bit to pay, but at least you'll get it in less than 12 months. Another thing to note is that the highest qualification you can get is certificates or diplomas. And a lot of graduate roles actually require a bachelor's degree or higher, but you can definitely still apply to those roles. I think one of the most important things is to just learn as much as you can while building your portfolio. Apply what you've learned immediately and start creating your own websites and building up your portfolio. Showing what you can do gives you more chances of landing a job instead of just relying on a qualification alone. Which then leads me to the next pathway to software engineering and that is being self-taught. So you want to learn it yourself. I will say that this pathway requires the most perseverance, discipline, and confidence because it's all up to you. And if you are someone wanting to change into a career in software engineering, what can you do now to get started? I will say a front-end development, aka building websites, because it is the most straightforward. The key thing is not so much just the language, but your focus area. So coding can be split into three parts, and that is front-end, back-end, and mobile app development. So it's hard to learn all three in just one go, especially when you're getting started. Choose one and focus on that area first. So for example, if you wanna focus on backend development, you can get started with Python and start learning the concepts. For mobile app development, there's Swift for iOS and Kotlin for Android, but those two areas are not my expertise. So let's get into front-end engineering. The most basic building blocks of a website is HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So if you go into your browser right now, right click and select inspect, you'll see the elements tab and you'll see some tags there. I want you to find out what those tags mean. So HTML and CSS were basically my first love in terms of languages because I started teaching myself those when I was 13 years old and that's basically what got me into software engineering. With basic HTML and CSS, you should be able to navigate around CMSs and template-based websites like Wix or WordPress. And then you can pick up your first clients and start building websites for them. And now let's go deeper. Front-end development is very JavaScript focused and there are different frameworks and libraries that are widely used by everyone. Out of all these libraries, I will say learn React because that skill set is very much in demand right now. But choosing to learn React or any other libraries or frameworks may take a while. And after talking to my workmates who have gone through this path, the key thing is confidence. Build websites for different clients and in that process, start building your confidence. By being self-taught, it is important to have a portfolio once you have a portfolio of projects that you can showcase, hiring managers stop looking at education history and they only start seeing your work. Once you get into a product company, that's when you start to learn more and that's when it becomes easier to move around. And then next thing you know, you're a CTO. Software engineering as a career is very experience based and you definitely learn a lot more by doing. And that is why being self-taught is a very viable entry point into this career. So to wrap up the actual how to become a software engineer, you must know the learning style that suits 
you. If you like structured and guided learning, then going to university or boot camps might be the most suitable. And if you like full autonomy or you are pivoting in your career, start learning by yourself and start building that portfolio. How do you actually become good at it? How do you become a good software engineer? In my opinion, it comes down to three things. You gotta love solving problems, you don't mind working with people, and you are always learning. And that wraps up everything I want to say in this video. I hope you learned something and enjoyed it. And if you did, please don't forget to hit that like button, comment, and subscribe. And I have no idea how to end this, so... Tapos na. Thank <laughs> you.